Yes, Nitin, go ahead. Okay. So, yep. So, whenever you feel uh, my audio is low or if you have any questions, please uh, stop me. And we can, I don't want this to be a one side session. So, let's discuss and uh, make it more interactive. So, today we are going to see about the UiPath apps reloaded. So, this reloaded is what we are more uh, focused today. So, UiPath apps is around, uh, I think it's two to three years old in UiPath. So, uh, but we have some good new improvements or uh, uh, new features which overcame the shortcomings which we had. So, two new features which we are focusing today is uh, on BB and real time robot communication support. And we'll see in detail what it is all about. So, this is the topic for the day. And a short brief about me. So, I'm Nitin. So, I'm a lead architect in Spirit and Technologies, and I have around uh, six years of experience in RPA. So, I started with UiPath Forum around uh, three years back and uh, followed by community mentor and then MVP and public speaker, which is a new thing in my portfolio. And I have my blog, which is mentioned here. You can follow it anytime. So, I'll be posting some interesting stuff over there about UiPath products and RPA. And uh, all my social media handles will also have the update. So you can please follow uh, for any queries or anything on RPA if you want to discuss. So let's move to the important part, which is the agenda for today. So we have this topics listed. So we have UI, we'll first see what is uh, UiPath platform, how it is uh, structured and then what is the role of apps inside that uh, platform structure we have and specifically what is UiPath apps and why we are going to use it. So once we know why we are going to use it, obviously we need to implement it in some real time uh, scenarios. So we'll be taking an example from healthcare domain to see how this apps uh, fit in into that particular problem and the features of the apps, what we had previously and what we have now and how better it is. And then uh, an eye on solution design. So we figured out a solution for this problem, right? So how that solution is designed and uh, how we are going to implement it with various UiPath functionalities. And then we'll see it uh, in detail, opening each and everything in technical and then a quick demo on the same. So this is all about for today. So I'll, I'll just quickly go to the next slide to start with the UiPath platform. So basically, UiPath comprises of these three uh, divisions. So we have discover, automate, and operate. So most probably, uh, we as RPA developers, we will be focusing on this automate section where we'll be having studio uh, and we'll be, we'd, we would have been seeing the orchestrator and other stuff, robots. So most probably, we'll touch only these uh, tools right in our daily work. So there are other tools, like many tools, to be honest, in UiPath. So, uh, one of the most prominent tool is UiPath apps. So UiPath apps is uh, basically a low code builder, which will help you to build applications and use robots to run the application. So this is the uh, brief about UiPath apps and you can use all these tools uh, interdependent or dependent, however you want. So that's how the uh, UiPath landscape is structured. So you can just plug and play with all these tools uh, with your core product suit, which is Studio Orchestrator and Robot. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead for seeing what is UiPath apps. So as we discussed, UiPath apps is a low code platform, uh, which is going to enable developers and users to build web applications kind of uh, with robots as backend. So when you build an application front end, uh, let's say a screen, and in the back end, the robots will help you to make that screen uh, live, to pull data, fetch data, build some functionalities around it to make it more dynamic. So the common problem we have in our organizations is about these four points maybe. So we have operational dependency on many applications and resources. So you can see how clumsy an organization application. So if, if a person or an employee should uh, do, an, do a daily task, you need to uh, just go to different applications, do some research, take the data out, do some data entry as well. And most of the systems are tightly coupled. Um, 
if one system is down, you cannot uh, basically take the data out of it uh, based on the other system. And you will be doing some repeated tasks on a daily basis. When I say repeated task, it will be very silly, but still uh, you need to do it because of the current system design you have. And the time consuming, uh, which is an obvious disadvantage we have in our regular manual task. So to reduce all these things, instead of going through multiple systems for doing a single task or uh, reaching to multiple teams, to avoid all these steps, we have our one-stop solution kind of, which is our UiPath apps, where your UiPath apps will be connected to all your systems in the backend and all the data which you want in a button click, you can get it in front of your uh, screen inside the UiPath app. So this is the basic idea of where we need to use uh, UiPath apps and how, how, how we should use. So when we get that in one single click, obviously it's um, not time consuming, it's very easy. You're not going to do any uh, repetitive checks or something because those repetitive tasks will be automated behind your apps. And it is very structured and systematic, very insightful, like whatever information in whatever format you want, you're going to just display it on your app. So this is how apps are going to be very useful. So you're going to just replace your clumsy system into a single uh, one-stop solution, which, which is able to fetch any details for you from any systems from anywhere. So now how to fit this in real time. So for that, we have taken a simple example. Uh, so we have two, we have addressed two problems in healthcare. We are going to address. So basically when, whenever we uh, go for uh, a medical visit, so we, we have this report in our hand, right? So we'll be having a, a medical history report for any patient we have. So that medical patient report is always going to be with high volume and many number of pages. Uh, as a doctor or a medical practitioner, you should go through each and every page of it to know what is the history and how uh, he can treat the patient better. So that is one challenge. And the other challenge we have is the cross collaboration between the uh, medical team. So patients will be experiencing some difficulties because the his medical history is not always going to be in one area, so it can be different. So all the teams should collaborate so that they can easily, uh, patient can get a better experience. So these are the two uh, uh, issues which we are going to address today in a high level, uh, how apps is going to help with, along with the other UiPath products. So this is our solution design. Uh, which we are going to propose for this problem. So we have UiPath apps, which is going to help our uh, medical team to just get details in one place. It can be any sort of details. So we are addressing two problems. One is patient report, and second is to collaborate with other medical teams, uh, internal or external water. So in this UiPath apps, we are going to have three major features which will help us. So one is user login. So user login is obviously simple uh, and authentication, which is uh, required to make sure only authorized users access the data. And we have a uh, patient report based functionality, which will help you to fetch and also analyze the report. And then we have uh, a real time chat with medical team. So you can chat with cross teams or any other medical teams to check something from them uh, in real time, like what we do in chat application side. So that is the front end we have. So we have these three features, which we'll see in a uh, few minutes. And then in the back end, we have three uh, entities. Two entities are robots, basic robots, which we do. So where the automations are deployed and it, it will have some workflows to help you perform these functionalities here. And then we have a data service, which is a product of UiPath, which act as a cloud DB. So, this cloud DB is connected directly to this apps without any support from using robots. Without using any robots, we are doing a native connection between apps and data service. That's why this is called as native user log. So the possibility of building solutions using apps is going to be uh, way far now. Uh, without being without we are using any robots, we are still connecting to data service. So we'll see how these things are uh, done in the app. I have one question. So yes. I'm Srija, by the way. So uh, 
data service like what is the limit of uh, records that we can store in a data service that yeah so is that depends any... yes it, there is a limit so that depends on your license so it is having a storage limit as well as uh, the traffic limit which you're going like read write operations so i don't okay. have the exact value with me but yeah there is a limit okay thank you So we'll just quickly jump into the live demo to see uh, how the app looks like. And then we'll uh, come back to how to build the same app, what features and how we can build. So I'll just run my app. So we just named our app as doctor's assistant. So we have this login screen. So once we uh, trigger the app, you can see the bot started running in the backend. So this is an attended, uh, attended setup. So once we start the app, our attended bots will get triggered on the same mission. So we have this basic login screen uh, where we can just enter a user ID of a doctor. So, and we can log into this. So once we log into the system, so this login, whatever we did now is not dependent on any bots. It is a native uh, VB supported functionality where we'll connect directly uh, to data service and then uh, get the data out of it, like validate the login. So once we log in, we have this dashboard here, which has a header and two sections. One is fetch the patient ID and second is to upload a patient report. The patient may be new to the hospital or something like that. So we can upload a PDF report of the patient and we can get the details out of it. And then as we discussed, we have a chat uh, discussion here. So we can post whatever messages we want and it will be displayed in real time for any users out there. So one question. Yes. Can we also do the login via SSO? Like is the org level SSO supported by any chance? So it depends on the setup. Yeah, so if you're using SSO, um, see there are two things. One is public public app and one is private app. So if you're using private app, uh, you're going to use, you can use your orchestrator login as an authentication step instead of building your own login. So in that way, your SSO will be already integrated to your um, orchestrator. So that would help you to authenticate to your app, which is one way. And second way you can build your custom SSO, which is very complex because you need to have your uh, API for SSO support, all these things. Okay. Okay, so this is the basic dashboard. Um, maybe I can just run a few of the features now to first see. So first let's try to run this uh, patient ID search. So, I have some patients already in my database. So once we type in the patient ID here, uh, it will first validate the patient. You can see the search patient button is uh, disabled, right? So only if it is valid, it will enable the button or else it will not uh, enable the button. So you can see patient ID is invalid. And you can see how quick the response is. Uh, that is the main part here because uh, we are, once you enter the patient ID, we are connecting to our robot. And our robot is actually checking the patient ID in a data source and then telling us that uh, this patient ID is valid or not. So let me give a valid patient ID. And you can see search patient button is disabled. So I think in just a matter of milliseconds, the validation is completed and we are, uh, the button is enabled. So if I click on this, again, it's, it's just uh, almost instant. So we, get, we got all the patient uh, related details here. So, all this happens using the backend robot connectivity, which goes to a data source, check for the patient ID and come back, and then populate the details over here. So these are the details, basic details we are collecting from the patient. And the second option we have is to upload a patient report, uh, which will also fetch the details for us. So if I just upload a patient report right now, maybe I'll choose this. 
So now the patient report will be uploaded to storage bucket. So there is something called uh, storage buckets in UiPath, if you're aware. So that is a document storage system, cloud document storage system. So we are uploading the data over there and then we are analyzing the document. When we say analyzing, it is the uh, generative way we are using in UiPath, which will analyze the entire document to list out the uh, highlighted parameters for us, which is the personal details and the medical review details. So that will save a lot of time because the medical reports, as we have seen, it can be of n number of pages. So there are uh, high chances of uh, inaccurate review or time consuming task for reviewing each patient. So in this way, by reading the entire report, it was able to fetch the name, gender, age, maybe last review date is not there. So, and possible concerns of the patient and what is the prescribed lab test for this concerns, which is automatically predicted by A. Obviously doctor can review this. Reviewing this information is pretty simple compared to opening the report and reviewing the entire information out of it. Um, so before I just, I just want to open the report before I proceed. So this is the uh, report we have. So you can see it has a lot of information out there uh, about the history of patient's medical report. So the GPT model is going to analyze all this report uh, data and then it is going to give you the highlighted. So we, we have set up some prompts in there. So we'll see how that prompts is set up and all those steps. So this is how uh, this upload patient report and analyzing the report works. And again, these two features are completely working based on the robot backend. So a robot is connected in backend and it is helping us to do all these steps. Whereas login does not have any robot dependency. It is a direct connection between uh, data service and apps. Now coming to the uh, final feature of the app, which is the chat uh, thread over here. So you can see whenever uh, there is a message, we have a doctor ID followed by the message or some employee ID followed by the message. So if I need to post a message, uh, maybe, hey, I mean, so this message will be posted. So we are just taking the latest five messages uh, from the DB. So this message will be posted and it will be available for everyone. Else. So if I can just uh, log in as another user. So I'm just opening another instance of app. So let's go to D2. So you can see uh, D2 is also having the information of them. Let's say, thanks for info. So, this is how two users or any number of users basically can chat. So this is just a high level feature. We can elaborate this feature as however you want. We can mention the list of users and separate the chat between users. So this is kind of a group chat we have. So uh, all those things are possible, but this is just to show the high level capability of apps. So these are all the features we have for the day. And we'll see how to implement, uh, how this is implemented already in this uh, setup of what we have, what we are seeing in the solution design. Okay. So what is UiPath apps reloaded and how all these things are possible uh, currently? So before this release, uh, UiPath apps uh, DB release, we had something called legacy apps. So legacy apps was dependent on something called expression language. So it is, uh, kind of a native syntax for UiPath apps. Uh, there was a documentation for it. You need to go through it and uh, know about the expression syntax and then write your own expressions in apps. And then uh, it is like you are learning something new. Uh, even though you are an RPA developer, you are learning something new. So you can uh, mention something like UiPath apps developer. And then there is a latency to connect to the backend because every time your bot should start, and then uh, your process will run and then the response will be sent back. So there is a lot of latency. Uh, there is a delay between the backend and frontend connectivity. So these are the uh, 
major challenges we had in legacy apps but now we have a revamped version of apps which addressed all these issues so there is no need of any new language you need to learn um i can simply put in this way you can build web applications with uipath studio so today you are building some automations using uipath studio right you are writing some vb code or c sharp code to build some automations with the same knowledge and with the same skill of you you can build web applications this is what uh, the best way i can say uh, how vb apps um bring in a change after this legacy so with the same vb knowledge you can go into the uipath app studio and then write an expression for example it can be a simple equals condition or it can be anything like access uh, create objects access it uh, do string functions so it can be any vb functions currently uh, it's still a partial support there are many things uh, we are expecting in this next releases for uipath apps where you can invoke new vb libraries all those things so that is the capability we have for today so no need to worry of anything else you just drag drop your web components you code in vb and you uh, push the app into prod like so that's it no need to learn any new languages or any new technologies apart from vb which we already know since we are developing automation since today and second most important feature is real time bot communication so this is a real game changer so before that we as i said we were connecting to robots every time on every trigger from the app you will be connecting to your robot uh, which means you need to first call your windows service and then from there your bot will be called and then from uh, bot will be running the process and then giving you back the response so the layers are uh, pretty heavy and the time taken to complete this cycle is very high but now we have something called backend as a service so once you trigger a robot it will act as a service for you um, you will not trigger it multiple times you will trigger only once and you use that trigger triggered robot uh, to do some functionalities for you so making it very super responsive so once you click a button you get the data immediately back provided your process is not that uh, laggy so your process should be optimized in a way that it can uh, execute in a shorter time so that your uh, app will also be responsive based on so these are the two major features uh, which apps got recently and in this current demo which we have seen all the features like login starting from login to the chat every feature is built on top of all these new uh, all these new features like vb and back end service so we'll see uh, step by step how that is being done so let me go back to my app in this meantime uh, if you have any questions uh, please go ahead and post it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and please feel free to ask so let me start from login so how this is been done as i said there is no uh, robot connectivity involved in the login step right so let me close the existing sessions so this is our login screen uh if you see in the login screen uh, we have two fields user id and password and two buttons login and clear and a header basically so all these controls you no need any technical uh, knowledge to implement these controls because it's all just a drag and drop so once you click on add control here you will be getting the list of uh, all controls right here which is text box button check box whatever you want so you can just drag in some element here and you will get it and to style this to configure something out of it you can use all these properties on the right which is still just a configuration there is no technical things involved here the only technical thing you will see is to use vb which you already know for example if you see here we have it is asking for a text value here you need to just provide a text string value so you know how a string is uh, should be given in vb so that is how the app is going to work so let me remove this item so once you have the setup ready uh, with the elements and the buttons out there so you need to just uh, link uh, with some entities right to enable the functionality so let me go back to data service because i already mentioned we are using this login functionality with data service as a backend 
and a direct connectivity between app and data service using VB functions. There is no robot in there, which makes the app more live and fast. So in this doctor's data service DB, we have two columns. One is user ID and password, and we have uh, uh, two records for D1 and D2. Let's just assume two doctors. So uh, with these details, once you enter it here, uh, the data will be checked against this uh, data service, and then uh, the user will be validated. So here, if I just go to user ID properties, uh, we have used a regex because the format is restricted to an alphabet and three uh, digits. So user should make sure that is all, always provided or else it will throw an error message called field is invalid. So again, this regex follows the VB syntax. So before this, to provide all these things, it's a bit complicated, but now uh, using VB, you can play around with n number of features and similar to Studio. Most probably like whatever you can build in Studio as an automation can be replicated as a web app using this VB UI part, uh, apps functionality. So that's the uh, idea kind of. So similarly for password, and once you click on login, let's go and see what rules uh, we have for this one. So we are just enabling a spinner, which is just to load uh, just to show the loading icon. And then uh, we are fetching the document, uh, sorry, doctor details from the DB. So this is the major uh, functionality or step which we are doing here for validating the login. So to do that, you have something called query builder. Uh, it is not coming right now because the query is already built. Uh, let me put a new set value here. So once you use query builder, you no need to write a VB expression on yourself, uh, unless and until you need some complex uh, queries to be done on the data service. So you can just use your data service, add a condition on what basis you want to fetch the data, and also you can do the uh, sorting as well. So in this way, uh, you can uh, build your queries, which will generate the VB code for you, which will look something like this. You can also build your own syntax code, which as per the documentation, again, everything is on the VB only. And if you if you don't feel comfortable, you can still use the uh, query editor, which is a low code, uh, where you can build the query syntax with that uh, wizard. So we are just fetching the doctor from the data service, uh, which is named as doctors, uh, by using the filter uh, user ID. And if you see this user ID value, which is coming from the UI component. So how this component is identified, uh, let me go back. So if you see, we have our login screen and we have our form section inside which we have two components. One is user ID text box and one is password text box. So we, we first need user ID value and then we need password. Value. So let me go back. So that this ID out here, screen name, element name, and the property of it. So screen name is login, element name is user ID, and then the value of it. So we are just taking the value from it to check if the user ID is matching from any of the records inside this doctor's data service DB. If it is matching, then we are just uh, in a, allowing the users to pass through. Actually, I think I missed the I missed to add one more condition for password, but yeah, uh, it's the similar way again. So we need to add both conditions or any number of conditions as we want. Uh, using AND operator or OR operator, and then you can just run this query to fetch. So currently we are fetching one user out of it based on the filter. Uh, once it is fetched, it will be stored in this uh, doc object. And then we are checking if it is not nothing. If it is null, then obviously the user is not found. If it is not null, then uh, the user is found. So we are opening the page, which is our second page called dashboard. So if it is not null, we are just telling the user login failed, please try again, and they can try it. And we are hiding the spinner. So this is the basic logic. Again, most of the things here is low code, right? The, the statements which you're writing, that is the only part where we are writing some code, uh, which is still in VB. So this is how the login is built. So it's completely native, no robots, no jobs involved. Everything is just uh, VB from apps, which is connecting directly to the data service. Uh, so to establish this connection, you need to just make sure one thing to add this 
uh, list of data service, whatever you have into this entities by clicking this test button. So it will automatically show you uh, what data service units you have under your tenant and you can just uh, click on it to add that data service here so that you can access that object here like how it is accessed like off doctor. So this is how uh, the login screen is built. Uh, it's completely the VB language we are using here and without robots. Now let's jump on to the next uh, important screen, which is dashboard, where we have the most of the functionalities which is implemented. So let's start with a simple functionality from here. So the simple functionality is patient ID validation. So we are validating the patient ID whether it is present in our DB store or not. If it is not present, we are just uh, not enabling the search patient button, right? So that is the first simple process I would say. So once this screen is loaded, uh, which is our dashboard, so you can see uh, the hierarchy of dashboard, which has a lot of containers and elements inside it. Again, all these elements are basically drag and drop. Uh, the functionalities inside it will be the statement ports which we use with. So if you go to the events of this dashboard page, we are doing some prerequisite checks. So first thing is we are starting our process. We are starting a process called chat sync. So chat sync process will help you to keep the chats in sync. Uh, no matter which user login, how many instances of uh, UiPath apps you're logging in for this doctor assistant, uh, this process will make sure the chats are always in sync based on the chat DB. And then uh, we are just, assigning some default values out there. So we are just uh, making the submit patient ID is true. So what is the submit patient ID is true? That is where, uh... so you can see submit patient ID is used in this disabled property of search patient button because by default, this should be always true. Only then this button will be disabled. So we'll enable this button unless and until we get a result from this patient ID validation process. So how that is being done? Uh, if you just choose this patient ID, we have again events. So each element will be having something called events with which you can include some functionality or feature to it. So whenever there is a change in this uh, text box of patient ID, we are invoking a process. I mean, not a process, but a workflow because the process is already invoked when we start the app in the login as we have seen. So we are just invoking uh, the workflow inside a process, which will help us validate the uh, patient ID. So we are just passing the patient ID value over there. And once we pass it, uh, the process checks it and returns back uh, the patient is valid or not. Let's say it's a Boolean. So based on that Boolean, we are enabling or disabling the submit patient ID flag, which will obviously enable disable the button, which we have set. So this is how uh, this connectivity happens. So before I jump into this, I just want to start going into studio because that's the that's where the major configuration for all these things are made. So currently, uh, the only change which I want you to focus on the app side is two things. One is this trigger workflow uh, block, which is a new block introduced in the reloaded uh, apps version. And the other block is the start process, which is a normal, as you can see here, we are starting a process called doctor assistant, which is the core process for this app. And uh, we have a supplementary process called chat sync, which will see, keep the chats in sync. So once this process is started, the process is never stopped. It will stop only when the app is closed. So uh, we once the process is started, we will be invoking the workflows from the process whenever it is required. Uh, for example, uh, we were seeing this uh, patient ID search, right? So here we are invoking the workflow, not the process. So that's where the real-time communication happens. You are not invoking the process every time. You created one process in which all the functionalities are implemented as workflows and you are triggering the workflows one by one whenever is required. So the process is always up and running. There is no delay in triggering the process anymore unless and until the first trigger. And then uh, all the trigger workflows will be kind of instantly reactive and help you to do the functions. So let's see how this uh, trigger workflow is reacting better based on the studio configuration we have. So let me just go back to studio to show you this. So as we know, uh, this yeah, doctor I'm assistant. Sorry to interrupt, I think we have got a question in the chat. Um, okay. 
as a chat widget okay is the chat widget native to uipath or custom built in apps uh this is not a chat widget this is just a simple uh, text box or let me okay i i'll cover that in when when we are seeing the chat feature okay it is not a widget or something it is something uh, which is already present in uipath as a control uh, like a text box i would say we'll see that in detail so after this feature okay so coming back to this doctor assistant uh, okay so this is how the process looks like so there is a new template released by uipath um, studio template let me just show you that first so which is called apps workflow communication so this apps workflow communication uh, you can easily understand the template if you have already worked on a trigger based automation so there is something called trigger based automation where you will wait for some file based triggers or uh, some event triggers on a click in an application or anything like that so if you know that already it will be very easy even then uh, it's pretty easy for you to handle because in this template everything is covered for you, similar to arifm you need to just start building your core logic but having the understanding of how the workflow uh, communication happens with this template will be an advantage of course so once you create the template you'll get two default things one is your main file and second is your internal folder so these two files will help you enable the triggers automatically uh, which will enable the setup of the trigger uh, workflow which we were seeing so we are not starting the process right we are just triggering a workflow so that the uipath studio process which is already running uh, will be responsive to this trigger will be reactive to this trigger so let me go back so this run local triggers all these triggers which we are going to see now is a new uh, trigger activities which got released under this workflow events package so you need to install this package so that you can use all these triggers so in your main sequence which is your main file of your project you need to make sure this run local triggers are present so this should be your uh, this is kind of a listener in ui pass to be once you run this process this run local triggers will listen for any triggers happening in uh, your local which is basically the app triggers and we also have this internal folder which has this app triggers flow where we are listening for app app request trigger which is uh, this is kind of a widget or plugin you can say which is present inside your app uh, so this is specific for app request trigger you need to just drag this activity and use it but with respect to this template it's already present uh, in a structure for you you no need to worry of any of these things and then uh, we'll be checking if the trigger uh, based on this trigger output from this thing we are checking if the connection is present or not if the connection is lost we are stopping the process if not uh, we are just going ahead for executing the workflow whichever is been triggered by the apps so this handle apps request will send the uh, request details from the app to the studio let's say you are triggering a flow called get patient summary uh, this handle request will do the job of routing which will send the pro which will enable the process to execute this patient summary and send the output back uh, to the apps so this is how the template works you will be having these two default things app trigger and main and you need to just start building your flows or functionalities as each xaml file so currently let's uh, go ahead and see how these uh, flows are built so we were seeing a feature called validate patient right let me go back to that so here once we enter the patient id we need to check whether the patient id is valid or not so for that we have this flow called validate patient so it's just a two step flow uh, so here we are just having an assign so the main uh, thing which you want to focus here is not about this logical flows which we built because you already know how to build conditions and how to check something uh, as a string the main part is how we are connecting this to the apps uh, this workflow how we are connecting with the apps so first of all we build some logic here where we are checking uh, inside a patient id list whether the corresponding patient is present or not uh, it's just a hard coded list and then we are sending back the output to the apps using this main flow arguments so we have two arguments one is patient id which is an uh, input from apps to this workflow 
uh, the apps will send you the patient ID as P triple one or P triple two, and then this flow is sending back patient valid Boolean flag back to apps. So how this communication is happening? Once you create this flow with this argument setup, you need to make sure you enable this workflow as entry point. Currently, it's already enabled. That's why you can see a disable option. Let me disable it to show you. So once you create the flow, you right click it, you'll get this option of enable entry point. Just enable the entry point. And once you enable the entry point, you will be publishing this automation to orchestrator, which will be added to your apps here. So you can see doctor assistant is already added with all the list of flows. So main flow will be always main. And then you can call any of this flow and you can see the list of uh, arguments listed as well, input, output, whatever the list you have. So currently we are focusing on validate patient. So validate patient has two things. One is in argument patient ID and in out argument patient ID. So once the process is added here and you will be map, start mapping it into your event. So search patient, uh, sorry, patient ID is the text box where we are going to check if the patient ID entered is valid or not. So if I go back here, we are just triggering a workflow of our process doctor assistant. And to access that, this is how we are doing it. Let me add a new trigger workflow to show you. So you can see it is asking for a workflow file and it will just show you this uh, suggestion pop-up where you need to pick your process and the invoked workflow inside it. So you can just double click on, so it will give you this. So that's how this is built. So I'll delete this. So you'll be having the workflow file name. And if you want to pass some arguments, you need to use this input over right here to pass. So we are passing the patient ID. Again, uh, same syntax. So you'll be accessing the process, process name, workflow name, and the argument name. And then the actual value of the element, which is your dashboard screen, patient ID, text box, and the value of it. So once you pass that, it will be uh, coming here to the validate flow. Uh, do the logic, send back the flag. And once it is completed, we are checking if the flag is true or not. If it is true, then enable the search patient button. If it is not true, don't enable, just throw a message saying that patient ID is in there. So all these things, whatever we are writing here, or maybe this Boolean expression, the string expression, the object expression, everything is in VB. So all these things again is in VB. If I just use control space, you can see the IntelliSense, what we get in studio, the same way we get. So patient valid is just a property of this uh, validate patient workflow. So this is how we are connecting this first workflow feature, which is validate patient ID. Uh, yeah. So let me go to the next feature. So we have search patient ID. So once the uh, validation is done. We are clicking on the search patient, which is getting all the details of this patient and populating it in this uh, components, right? Which is the UI components. So for that case, we have a workflow which is called search patient. Um, again, same thing. You need to enable this as an entry point and set up all your arguments. We have only two arguments. I intentionally uh, set this as a dictionary just to show you how this dictionary is manipulated in apps to populate the data back to the uh, UI elements. We'll see that in a minute. So we have two things, patient ID and patient data. So patient ID will be used to perform a logic to search for the patient and send the patient back as a dictionary. And we also have a scenario where the patient may not be found. So once this is set up, you will be having the arguments ready and you will be going back to apps where we will be going to search patient event, trigger the workflow search patient, pass the patient ID as an argument in the input override. And the core part comes in the completed stage. So here, if you see, we are doing a lot of steps, setting the value uh, for various UI elements out there. Uh, actually, this is not the very best way to do, but just to show the capability of VB in UiPath apps, I, I, I was just passing it as a dictionary output from the process and accessing the dictionary values from there just to see uh, the capability of me. So 
first of all, we are accessing the element values. You know, we have six UI elements on the screen, right? Once we search for the patient. So we are accessing the value property of six elements here, as you can clearly see. And for that six elements, we are just uh, mapping that output dictionary to this by doing some manipulation. Let's see what is this. So we have this patient data output, which is our dictionary, which will be having the properties of each patient. When I say properties like name of the patient, age of the patient, uh, medical report, sorry, medical review date, uh, lab test, prescribed lab test, everything. So all those data will be present inside this object. So we need to access it one by one. So how can I access this in a more easier way is like to access the property of patient data. But how to make sure this property is available because the output of the process was a dictionary, but not an object. So you need to go to your process, uh, search patient. So you know that your patient data is a dictionary, right? So whenever you have some complex objects out there, UiPath app enables you to add some custom properties for you. I mean, sub property, uh, provided it is a proper object which supports this property way of defining things. For example, a dictionary or an actual object, uh, you can create a patient data class, which has all these properties. So those kind of objects are supported where you can create this sub property. So we know what are all the properties this patient data object is going to have, right? So we just listed down these properties with the type. And once the data is uh, routed back to apps, UiPath apps automatically understands that uh, okay, patient data has all these properties and it will map the data to it. And then we need to access that map data for us to map it to the UI elements. So we are just accessing the same way. Process, process name, workflow name, the object, and this is defined in UI path apps. So we know that there is a name property which is coming from the dictionary name key that is converted into the property in this UI path apps configuration and that is being used. So in the similar way, we are uh, we are just accessing each and everything, age, uh, value, sorry, uh, gender, last checkup date. So this is a date only property because it is a date control, right? So date control is again uh, a class in .NET, VB.NET. So we are just initiating this class, uh, initiating this object, basically new date only. And inside date only accepts three arguments, which is year, month, and day. I mean, again, this is not a best way, it's kind of a dirty way, but yeah, just to even this complex statements we can write uh, in apps using VB. So that's the whole point of the statement. So date only is assigned, which is going to send the date to this uh, UI element. And similarly, other text boxes like areas of concern, lab test, and whatever. So this is how the values are being populated between studio process and UiPath apps. Uh, and this is kind of an instant because we are triggering the workflow, but not the process itself, because the process is already pre-triggered and the process will be keep on running in your mission unless you are having, uh, I mean, you are stopping your app or you are having some technical issues. So once the app is, sorry, the process is started, uh, you, can trigger any sort of workflow in any of this any of this uh, UI elements event uh, so that the, your app is very much responsive and uh, you can just utilize the data out here in the apps. So the third final feature is the patient report uh, PDF analysis. So once you upload the report, we are just sending this report to the GPT uh, extractor in UiPath and that GPT extractor is going to tell you what details uh, you need to map for this elements. So let, let us just quickly go through that. So we have this get patient summary uh, flow. So this is what is going to help us uh, get the data out of a PDF. So we have this four to five steps. So this is little bit uh, out of app. So again, uh, since we have seen the UiPath platform on the uh, first slide. Um, we are just making everything into one. We are, we are just trying to set up things so that we can make a best solution out of it. That's why I want to just cover the UiPath product suit in the beginning. Uh, it's not like you, you need to think a solution only with UiPath apps. You need to just think 
a better solution with all the UiPath products we have because everything can be easily connected and uh, utilized. So for this get patient summary, we are getting two things. One is patient report, uh, which is the name of the report. And then second, we have the uh, patient raw data, which is the output, which will be sent back to UiPath uh, uh, apps so that it can populate the data. Into it. Again, it is a raw string. So here again, we are going to use some complex uh, VB statements in the UiPath apps to populate the data out. So how this flow is uh, behaving is like we are downloading the file from the storage bucket. As you would have already seen, we are uploading the reports to buckets. Uh, so we need to download it first and then extract the data out of it. So this is an activity called uh, extract document data, which is released in uh, document understanding package 2.3.1 preview where we have this generative preview capability. So we are using GPT activities to extract the data out of it. So the GPT will help you um, understand the report, uh, medical report, fetch only the required data for the doctor or the medical practitioner and show it on the screen. So the doctor no need to go through every uh, page or things out there in the report. So it's a very time saving activity out there. So to do this, we need to just enable the predefined project, uh, enable the extractor. So it's all uh, in a drop down. You need to just choose. So we'll be getting a list of ML models. Currently, in the preview mode, we have this generative capability as well. You will choose this and you can provide the prompts. So this is the crucial part for this use case. So whenever you interact with GPT, right, you just uh, ask a question to it. Similar way you need to do here. You'll be having two fields one is key and one is value. So we'll be having the uh, keys as name. So we know what fields we need, right? So just go back to apps. You know, name, last review, gender, possible concern, age, uh, prescribed lab test. So we know what are all the keys. So all this will be sent as keys and value is your prompt. Um, let's say you interact with your chat GPT on, on your regular basis, right? So you ask some questions. So those questions will be going into this value fields. For this, for extracting name field, what uh, prompt you should give, what question you should ask to the GPT. So extract the patient name from the medical report, extract the patient gender. I mean, we can tweak the prompt uh, using like trial and error only, like which is best uh, to give us the output. So we are extract the patient age as a number from the medical report, extract the date in this format, extract the list of abnormal or affected areas as a comma separated string, list of medical tests preferred for the affected system. So this is something uh, which may not be from the report. Uh, this is something that GPT can also suggest you and that the practitioner can review this uh, prescribed text uh, based on the affected systems extracted and validate as well. So this is the capability of generative uh, extraction we have, which is going to I think it will reduce the job uh, up to 75% of savings because going through the report, making the accurate uh, prescriptions is going to be very tough for n number of patients. So this is going to reduce those things for sure. So all these things will be set up, uh, which is going to give you the output as answer. And so that answer is kind of a raw string, right? Whenever you ask something to GPT, it's not going to give you a uh, proper field based or something. It's going to give you it's going to give you a proper field based only, but it will be as a raw string, a uh, full uh, chunk of string. You need to do some manipulations later to segregate from it. So currently, in our case, GPT was giving a raw string with the list of values, whatever we have seen in the prompts, um, like key value pairs. So we are we are just segregating that in the apps. So once this raw data is sent to apps, going back to apps. Once we click on this upload patient report, uh, we are having this. Up, okay, we are first uploading the file to storage bucket and then we are triggering the workflow, which is called get patient summary. And we are passing the input, which is uh, the file name. Once we pass that, we are getting the data out of it uh, and assigning to each of the UI feed. Let me open this. So we are getting the raw data, right? It's a string. So we uh, every line will be a field. So that's how the GPT was giving the output back. So it will give you name, colon, the value, 
next line uh, h colon the value something like that so we are just splitting it uh, as with new lines and then we are taking the first line which is and which is the name obviously we know and we are splitting it with colon because we don't want the field name but only the value and we are just taking the last <clears throat> bit of it and trimming it so this uh, I think you you will be already knowing how the string manipulations work. So I'm not getting much into it, but uh, the focus is on how complex VB expressions we are writing here to get the data out of it. So usually we do write this data in studio, but now we are writing in apps. So what happens, why I don't want to write these statements currently in studio is uh, to just reduce the latency as much as possible. So doing all these things inside studio will add additional steps and the data coming back will take time. So instead you can write in the apps so that it works on the client side. So you just execute the scripts on the apps only so that it's kind of very instant instead of going to robot and getting mm -hmm. the data back. So all these uh, values will be based on the string manipulation, same way. So we are taking the second row for, uh, I think it is the gender or age, yeah, gender and then H, last checkup, area of concern. So again, for last checkup, it is a date, so we are just doing the same. Uh, again, a dirty way, but yeah. So year, date. So we are just taking the string out of it, converting it to date. From the date, we are taking the year, and then assigning it to the date only object. So all this complex, even in UA path, uh, we do this in a more better way. Same thing we can do here as well by adding multiple set values. But uh, for now, just to showcase, this is how this complex VB expressions UiPath can handle now. So this proves that uh, UiPath apps is now capable enough to almost build anything which is possible in Studio. Uh, even though it has some limitations, which is going to be addressed in upcoming versions. Um, but yes it is very much capable to implement most of the things. <clears throat> so let's go back to the dashboard and, okay, so we have covered all these features on the left. So we have seen how the patient report analysis work and how the search patient ID works. <clears throat> now let's go to the chat, which is the most uh, a different part of this application. So the first part is we, are go we have two things in this chat, two sub modules. One is to sync the chats, and second is to uh, post the chat whenever the a user is trying to send a message. So for let's first start with sending a message because that is pretty straightforward. So you have a message text box and you have a post button here. So uh, I think uh, Udit, right? Yeah, Udit was asking how yeah. uh, this chat widget is built. So yeah, so there is no pre-built chat widget or something. So we'll see three components which helped us to build this chat widget. So first thing is list source. So this is something called a list source element, which we have. So this is a list uh, where you can display a list of values. So we are using this list source for displaying the list of chats. And we have a normal text box, uh, which is the text box from here. So text box and then a button. So all this styling alignment is just the containerizing things and style. So everything is a separate component and is just arranged in such a way that uh, it looks like a chat window. So let's start with the text box and button. So in the text box, we are going to just um, enter a message, whatever the user wants. And in the post button, we are adding, we are triggering a workflow called sync chats. I just go back to the doctor assistant, we have a flow called sync chats. So this sync chats is going to just add the message to the uh, chat DB. Uh, it is not going to sync anything. Uh, sorry for the name, but yeah, it is going to just add a message to the chat DB saying that uh, doctor triple one, I think we have two doctors, D triple one and D triple two. So this user is adding this message. So these two details, user ID and message will be pushed to the chat DB. So here in this case, chat DB is uh, nothing but a small CSV file. Uh, we can use any source obviously, but yeah, here we are just using the CSV file. Uh, if, if I want to just show you the CSV, let me quickly open it. 
so we have these two columns uh, doc id and message and this is what is being used as a db2 sync the chats so any new chats will be getting added here and sync will be happening accordingly okay so i'll just go back so we are just whenever we get a chat uh, we are just ha having these two things doc id and message and we are just adding that uh, details into this up and csv activity using this up and csv to just add it to the csv db and that's it message successfully sent and we are not outputting anything in this uh, flow even though uh, we have an out string i just created it but we are not using it anywhere uh, we are just adding the chat details into the db so this process is going to only do that. And again, this is a same uh, doctor assistant workflow, sorry, doctor assistant project where we are enabling an entry point for the sync chats and we have this. So that's where we are using trigger workflow to use, uh, do, to call the sync chats workflow and pass this two data out there. So now once we are not doing it, we are not getting any response if you can see here, uh, because we want the sync to be in real time. Uh, the sync will be kind of uh, whenever there is an update in the uh, CSV DB, that update should automatically reflect in the chat window. So that's the crucial part. So once the DB is added, uh, we'll go to the chat window part now. So this is our chat window. So for this chat window, how to populate the data? So to do that, we have this dash uh, screen, right? Dash screen, entire screen. So we are creating an event over here. So whenever this screen is loaded, we are triggering a process called chat sync. So this chat sync will run asynchronous, no matter any how many other number of process you're going to run. Uh, this is going to be always running for you to keep the chats in sync, to fetch the database, uh, which is our CSV DB, and then uh, keep the chats in sync. So there is no input, there is no output anything because uh, let me go back to chat list. So if you see here, there is a list source property for this uh, chat list element, right? If I just open this. We are accessing the out argument of our uh, chat sync process, chat thread list. Uh, there is a new process for this. So if you see here, I don't want to go inside the logic. It's just the read CSV and formatting the uh, chat as username colon message and then sending the, okay, th there is one more thing called interim result. I'll come back to that. So we are sending an output here called chat thread list. So this output is mapped to this uh, source of this chat, uh, chat thread list component. So that whenever the process runs, the output argument is automatically mapped or synced to this uh, element source. So that's the idea of this configuration. And as soon as this dashboard page is loaded, uh, we are triggering this process asynchronously to run all the time. So when, once you trigger this process, uh, this is a normal process. There is no event, even though it's built on uh, app event template, there is no event involved here. It's just a normal process you can build and run. So here we are just running an infinite loop uh, where we are reading the CSV and we are doing all this logic and there is one thing called send interim result because the output argument will be sent back to app only when this process comes to an end or an workflow comes to an end before end before the workflow getting um, completed or a process getting completed there is no way that this output uh, argument will be mapped to these apps so to do a workaround on that part we are using this send interim result so this is going to send an intermediate result to the apps. It will just go communicate to app that currently my chat thread list has five items. After some time, it may also have 10 items. So that I will send you once the workflow gets completed. But for now, please use this uh, chat thread list uh, intermittent value. So that is the use of this send intermediate. So this workflow is going to run all the time as soon as your dashboard page is loaded and keep on sending this interim result to the apps uh, dashboard on every loop of this while so as soon as i post a message so as soon as i post a message here my 
uh, another process is going to write the message into the DB, right? And once the DB is updated, this chat sync is already running for us, which is going to keep the chat threads in sync. So no matter uh, how many number of app sessions you uh, have, because without this interim result, uh, which was in legacy situation where you need to have a refresh button where users should manually click on refresh button to load the chat. Uh, now we can, we can, we are uh, way beyond no need of any uh, refresh button. This interim result will help you to uh, keep the process sync in check. So any sort of data, it's not chat is one good example, which I thought to show the sync part. But you can think of any uh, other use case as well where you need real time sync. So, in any real time sync scenarios, this interim result is going to help a lot, uh, which will keep things in sync automatically without any user intervention. So, in this way, uh, no matter any, no matter which app session you are using, let's say D, we are, we have already seen the demo, right? D triple one was in one tab and D triple two was in another tab, where D triple one can chat with D triple two. Uh, even in different missions if the app sessions are provided your data source is like centralized currently it's local in my machine only but yeah it should be centralized so that uh, you can use that same feature out. so this is all uh, about the features which uh, we had i had for the day so we have used uh, two important features as we discussed one is the vb uh, syntax for apps and second is this real time communication uh, where we just trigger a workflow by starting a process initially and trigger n number of workflows as required and third how to use gen gen a extractor to extract any sort of data from a document uh, i mean this i there is no restriction kind of you're not restricted to any sort of uh, layouts or anything going forward using gen a you can use a simple prompt method to extract any sort of data from any sort of document, no matter the layout or structure, whatever the document is. So that is one of the feature. And finally, we have seen this uh, interim result, which is going to help you uh, enable real-time sync in your web apps, which is built using web apps. So, so yeah, that's all for the demo and uh, the features we had for UiPath apps reloaded. And I think now it's time for maybe Q&A. And if you want to discuss any sort of uh, things which we have seen and which are not seen as well, we can discuss. And hope uh, the session was a bit clear. Uh, Hi, Nitin. I have one question. Can I ask? Uh, yes, please go ahead. So if I wanted to calculate the data services into the data table in UiPath apps, how we can do that? Suppose we have a three columns and we wanted to create a fourth column in runtime when the application is loaded. It is possible to do that right now or this feature is still... Because yes. I... Uh, if, I, if I understood correctly, you're saying you have a data table and from the apps, you want to create a new column in the data table. Yes. At runtime, yeah. I think it should be possible. Or maybe using edit grid or something. I think it should be possible. Uh, with, with the VB apps, I think it should be possible, but I'm not sure of the legacy apps, but with VB apps, I feel it may be possible. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Uh, guys, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask queries. Uh, we'll take another five minutes to discuss more on Q&A. And then maybe uh, we can ask any other doubts apart from this. Um, if you're not able to unmute yourself, just ping in the chat so that we'll try to unmute you. Hey, Nitin, this is Usha. So you have showed some template in the studio, right? So which actually communicates with the VB yeah. apps. So yes. will that going to help to run the automation even in unattended mode or is just for attended mode? 
currently it is restricted for attended more uh, as per the announcement right uh, about from the product managers and release notes it is going to be uh, soon available for unattended as well got it thank you Any 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 questions? Uh, so Urmila here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, if you already answered, I was not there in between. But yeah. Uh, so like, uh, my question is like, uh, since we have created this apps kind of thing, so can we deploy it? Uh, and uh, it will give like a like a URL. And from that URL, uh, the business or other person who are, who are authorized, can it, can it be accessed using that particular URL? Yes, uh, very good question. So, so you need to just pop, currently since it's an internal demo, I was just using this preview mode. So you need to use this publish option mm -hmm. uh, where your app will be published to the orchestrator tenant. Uh, I think I missed this part. So you will be publishing here with all these details, version, uh, app project. And from here, you need to create it in one of the folder as, see, whatever you do for uh, a process, right? You publish it as a package and you create a process. It's mm -hmm. almost the same way. So as I said, uh, the app's experience is going to be similar to what we do in Studio, starting from VB to uh, deploying it as, as, a, as an app. So once you publish, it will come here as a, in the tenant and you go to your folder, uh, go to apps here, create your version, deploy app, and from here you will get the URL. Copy URL and share it with your users. Uh, can you repeat the steps, whatever you have mentioned this? Uh, I'm in mean okay. the part which is after deploy, uh, like publishing that one. Yeah, so you will be hitting the publish here, mm -hmm. which will publish your app to your tenant, which okay. is here. Mm -hmm. tenant app versions you got your app here which is already published and once it is published uh you can assume this as a package when you publish an automation first of all you get a package you will not get a process directly right so this is your app package and then you go to your folder because uh, your app should be accessible only by some specific departments right you you don't want your app to be accessible by everyone mm -hmm. so you need to go to your particular folder out there create the go to automations app section deploy your app where you can choose your app from which will be displayed and deploy so once you deployed your app any user inside this folder can access this app with this url out here so you can copy this url and use it uh, in the browser So your app is displayed. Oh, Thank you. So I guess other question is, uh, you know, will this URL is going to be public URL or should it can be accessible only to the users who have access to the orchestrator? Yeah, I think uh, the user should have access to the orchestrator uh, because the app which I created is a private app. Um, as in the recent releases, you would have seen, we also have a provision to create public app. So if we choose public app option, then obviously yes, with that URL, even a public user can access. Understood. Thank you. Uh, so Urmila here again, uh, I yeah. do have an, another question, like, uh, do we need any licenses for this or is it, uh, like, uh, free to use? Mm. Of course, we need license actually. I mean, for building, it's fine, but to add users, uh, you need license. Okay, thank you. Cool. Any any further questions? Uh, I have one uh, doubt, but I'm a beginner, so uh, sorry if I speak anything wrong. So you developed this application, right? Now you said uh, this is an attended uh, 
a bot I can do this. Right. Now, right. if I develop a bot where the bot is already uh, using this app as a UI selector where the user ID and password is, uh, uh, can we do this? Like the bot will uh, enter the values into the user ID and password. Uh, you mean this user ID and password or you have a different application? I have, no, the, I developed a uh, UI application, the UI path, uh, using UI path apps. Now, okay. instead uh, attended a person uh, using the values into this, I have a bot already where I need to uh, get the Excel values and put it into this. Can I do that? Uh, see, that, that is kind of uh, no need, right? Because you already have the user ID and password with you in the process. So no need of this login screen. You can directly uh, authenticate in the backend with that data. No, you created this just to make things easy for a user. Okay. So yeah, instead of using a bot to enter details here, no need of the screen, you can directly authenticate with that data which you have in the backend. Okay. Thank you. Cool. All right. Any any questions? We have a few more minutes. All right. Okay. Uh, yes, Omar. Yeah. Yeah. So I have one. Like, uh, we need to. Uh, whenever we are adding that particular, uh, uh, like, suppose the data or the form which we have created in the app, as an app, and uh, business has entered the data that needed to be added into the queue. So it okay. is the possibility. Uh, I mean, it is the uh, the thing uh, in the app it is allowing us to uh, add that into that particular queue mm -hmm. but for the json one uh, i think we need to create some json kind of thing and that needs to be pre-uploaded to that particular queue so uh, like how how and uh, do you have any sources from where we can we can create that json or like uh, how basically we need to create that one when you say json uh, is it the queue data json you're saying for yes. each queue item or right right the queue data json i'm talking about okay because we have two things one is queue data json and second is the schema like validation json of queue items mm -hmm. so if it is queue data then i think you can create it in the app only uh in the format of i mean in whatever format because obviously in ui path studio we can able to customize the queue item content right uh, mm -hmm. in whatever format we want because it's again a vb syntax we do there so the same syntax is possible now here which means it is possible so uh like if suppose i have to so i that what you mean is like we don't need to predefine uh the data or the things which needs to be added into the queue right we can directly add uh, like whatever needs to be added into the queue. We can provide it over here. But Correct. as per uh, my, uh, I mean, whatever I did the things, maybe I can be wrong. But mm. here it is asking us to select the particular data and then assign the value from the form, right? So what I'm trying to do yes. is that I have created one form and uh, mm. the data which has been entered into that particular form needed to be added into the queue. Right. So uh, like whatever the queue which I have created for that one, if I use this, uh, what needs to be added into the queue, it is asking me like which value needs to be mapped to which value. So. Okay. So yeah, just give me a second, let me try. So there, if you see the in employee ID is there uh, in right. your queue, it's already there. So how did yeah. you, uh, how that had uh, come over there? So in my case, it is not appearing. So did you provided any, any JSON to queue while it creating or like how? That's what, so yeah. this JSON is what then you're asking about? Yes, this yes. Specific. yes that is so yeah, 
so this json is something you can define like this is how my queue is going to be like uh, for this you have a documentation like how do you so yeah so yeah, currently if you see we have defined that employee id is a string mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be there for sure so it is fetching from here you can define n number of uh, properties or yeah things uh, is so there any documentation or any any sources of learning uh, how do we yes create? yes just just search for uh, uipath or uipath queue uh, schema there is an official link maybe i'll try to share as well Thank you. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Great. Um, I think we are almost time. Maybe if you have a concern in the interest of time, like if you have any queries, uh, you can reach out to Nathan or in the group chat so that we'll try to help you out with your queries. But before we wind up, I would appreciate if everyone can turn on your camera so that we can have a quick peek. Um, uh, Nathan, I, uh, maybe I, I hope you have the host on. So can you stop the yeah, recording yeah. and then, yeah. Maybe can everyone turn on your camera and uh, you can also use the background if it's just given on the chat, if it's fine with you. Let's take another minute to allow everyone to join on the camera. Um, well, thank you so much, Nathit. Uh, it was so informative. Uh, highly appreciate it. Um, we'll catch up soon with another interesting topic. Uh, stay tuned. And if you're, if anyone of you is interested to take a session, uh, you can reach me out and or you can reach either to Lhasa or Rohit or myself at any time. Uh, we'll try to enable you to take a session and be it virtual or in-person. In-person in sense, like if you're, if you're if you know any place or in your own company, if they're ready to host any session, you can uh, let us know so that we can plan for an in-person meetup. And uh, of course, we have some plan for it next month. So we'll catch up soon in that in-person meetup. And uh, thanks everyone again for joining this call in spite of all your work. Take care. Uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks for this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, buddies. Thank you. Sorry. You all. Bye.